Over the past year, I've been working with GCSE and A-level students. Just this summer, they have scored over 100 A's and A-stars combined. Now, I'm going to share with you the three secrets that these students had that helped them achieve these amazing grades. The first stage is understanding. What does understanding truly mean? It means that you have gone through from A to Z of your syllabus and you can explain that concept to an eight-year-old. This is something known as the Feynman technique where you take a really complicated concept such as an A-level or a GCSE concept and you explain it to a seven-year-old. It's not just about knowing the answer, it's also about understanding and reasoning as to why you got to that answer. I want to propose a question to you guys. What's the difference between you and a robot? Go on, take a second and think about it. A robot doesn't sleep, it doesn't get tired, it doesn't need to eat, it doesn't need to go to the toilet, it does not make mistakes. It is very cheap in comparison to a human. As we move into the future, robots are going to become a normal part of our lives. They're already taking over many jobs. Here you can see an example of me playing around with DALI 2, which is an artificial intelligence where you can type in a few words and it will create a nice visual image for you. A human, on the other hand, would take quite a long time to produce anything close to this level of quality. Only recently, someone submitted into an official art contest a DALI image and they actually won. So no matter what field you're in, your job is not safe from robots. There's only one advantage that you have as a human and that is understanding. A robot does not understand why it's doing something. It's not only going to help you get that A star, it's actually going to set you up well for your life. A lot of students have it wrong. They think that you have to memorize the majority of the content. It's the other way around. You have to understand, say, 90, 95% of the content, and maybe there's three to 4%, which is a bit abstract and you just have to rote learn. But if you just understood the formulas, the principles a lot more, the pathway to the A star is a lot easier. So understanding over memorization always. We're going to now talk about memorization, which is also an important part of your examinations. Now, I know I just talked about the fact that understanding is greater than memorization. That is correct. But once you've understood it, you do need to start memorizing that understanding those key principles. The way I see the process of examination is there is an upload stage where you upload the understanding into your brain. And then there is a stage in the exam where you have to download it from your brain onto a piece of paper. Now that download cannot happen if you cannot retain that understanding in your brain. There are plenty of memorization techniques out there. I personally recommend two ways, rote learning and flashcards. Rote learning is an old school effective way of learning things verbatim. I have done a whole other video on how to do this. You can watch that down here. And the other way is flashcards. Here's me talking about flashcards in the past. And then the other thing that I would recommend is using flashcards. So what you want to do is you want to write the question down on one side and then the answer on the other side. But here's the thing. A lot of students try to put 10 questions on one side and maybe 10 answers on the other side. No, 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 you don't want to do that. You want to limit it to one topic, one question on one side and the answer on the other side. So if it's, I don't know, a list of items that you need to remember or it's a process that you need to remember, try to get it down to about three to five items because our brain remembers in a short term memory only in chunks of three to five items. Every time you make a mistake on your paper, you go and write that mistake question down on one side on the flashcard and then the answer on the other side. And then you use it whenever, at bedtime, at breakfast, on the bus, on the train, in your breaks in school, you test yourself on it. If you know it, you put it in the I know it pile. And if you don't know it, you put it in the I don't know it pile. And then what you do is you periodically go back to the I don't know it pile and you continue working through that until you have zero flashcards left in the I don't know it pile. Well, memorization gets a bad rap from a lot of people. A lot of people say, oh, why do exams test our memory? Shouldn't they just be testing our understanding? And whilst that's a fair point, I think what we need to understand is what's called system one and system two thinking, made famous by Daniel Kahneman. Now you have system one, which is your fast thinking brain. And you have system two, which is your slow thinking brain. So when you're doing novel activities like doing the question 6,744 times 28 in your head, that requires system two thinking because you have to think about it in a novel way. Whereas if you do everyday tasks such as turning the handle of a door or walking down the road, you do those automatically. You don't even think about it. These things happen automatically and this is part of system one thinking. So what 
happens when you are memorizing the information. What you want to do is you want to move the information from an understanding point of view, the system two, the slow and the novel way, into the automatic part of your brain, which is the system one thinking. So the more you memorize, the more you're moving it into the automatic part of your brain. And this automatic part is really useful. So when you are trying to understand or solve a problem, if you can hold multiple ideas in your fast thinking brain, then you can solve the problem a lot more easily and of course, a lot more quickly. So we really want to shift a lot of our ideas into system one as much as possible. So I think this is where I have a case for why you should memorize, even if the exams weren't testing for memory, because allowing it to lie in your system one thinking gives you that flexibility in your brain to be able to manipulate grand and complex ideas. Now, hopefully I've convinced you that memorization is an important part of your study plan. So what's next? Next, we have to put this into application. We need to be able to download this information, which is now hopefully in our automatic part of the brain. We need to be able to download this onto the exam paper, of course. So downloading is a whole other skill from just memorization. We need to be able to recall it and apply it in context. How do you go about doing that? The best way that we know from scientific literature, such as Carl Pickett, and probably butchering this guy's name, but what he's shown in his study, amongst many other studies, by the way, that doing practice papers is by far the best way you can improve your grades. I believe it's like almost 20% clear of the next best method. Now, 20% might not seem like a lot, but actually, if you think about it, for GCSEs, that's equivalent of two to three grades improvement. Really and truly, you can abandon all of the techniques, to be honest. and just focus on practice papers because that's really what's going to make the difference. Now for the students I mentioned that got the top grades over 100 A's and A stars in combination, how many papers did they do? Well, for GCSE, they did 70 plus papers per subject. For A levels, they, for some of them, they did 60 plus, some of them did 100 plus, some of them even did 200 plus papers for their A levels. Now that is the level of dedication and effort that is required. Often when it comes to exam technique, a lot of students and teachers think the solution lies on what you do in the exam. I strongly disagree with that. I believe exam technique is built outside of the exam when you are practicing these 70 papers. The way you can do that is you want to track your results on a benchmarking file where you're tracking every single paper that you've done as well as all the mistakes that you're making. When it comes to mistakes, you really want to abstract those mistakes. So what I mean by that is can you spot what specific topic this question is? So don't try to learn the answer to this specific example that they've given in a particular paper on a particular subject. You want to try to abstract that out and say, what principle are they testing here? And do I really and truly know that principle? So that is what you've got to try to learn in every single mistake that you find. Secondly, you need to focus on your timing, right? It's really important that you are focusing on your timing and you're working as close as possible to realistic exam conditions. And finally, you want to see if you're actually repeating those mistakes again, because as Einstein famously said, making the same mistakes again and again and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. Don't make that mistake again and subscribe.